Welcome to the biggest, most important project I've ever done. Hey there, hobby friends. I'm Jared, and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Recently, it was my daughter's birthday, and I had some grandiose aspirations of building her some sort of diorama as a gift. In fact, I spent two days in the vendor hall at Adepticon just searching for the perfect model. Eventually, I came across Caladriel from Big Child Creatives, and something just clicked. Create a framed piece, something like a dollar store version of what a personal hobby hero, Roman Lapotte, has created many, many times. And similar to what Alex from 52 Miniatures had recently created. Maybe a cold, mountainous scene, some ice, or snow, or ice and snow, with Callie firing her arrow outside of the frame. After acquiring an antique frame, okay, I, I, I ordered it off of Amazon. I had all the pieces. Unfortunately, after having come back from Adepticon and between all the other adulty type commitments, I had pieces of about four days to get it done. Caladriel here really wasn't dressed for snow and cold, so her skin needed to reflect that a bit. I grabbed tan flesh and started mixing in some bold pyrrole red to add some more life and some coal black to darken and desaturate it. After slapping across all the flesh, I was left with a nice cold and irritated shadow tone. To build the volumes, I started mixing in more and more tan flesh, as I covered slightly less surface with each thin layer. Periodically, though not necessarily at each step up in color, I'd further thin down the previous step and glaze it over the transitions, kind of helping to smooth them. At some point in the process, I started adding some pale yellow to the mix. This brought a little visual interest to the highlights and some life to the skin. You may notice some purple lips and eyeshadow, and that isn't on camera because because well it's it's hard to film with these things on. I spent about a quarter of the total time I had on the skin alone, so the pressure was on. As has been established in previous videos, purple is awesome. Besides, it's my daughter's favorite color. So the cloak and the bulk of the armor needed to be purple. For the cloak or skirt, I guess, I mixed in some black into the purple to get some depth and desaturation to the shadows. After building back up to the purple, I continued building the volumes by mixing in some pink. Yeah, the bottle says magenta, but it's pink. I tried to treat the armor bodice thing much differently than the flowing skirt, as if it were shiny, hardened leather. More like metal. Adding some bright ivory to the purple-pink mix, I focused on very small but bright highlights, trying to create that sharp contrast from shadow to reflection that you'd see on something shiny. Purple and gold are, well, they're great together so the remaining armor needed to be gold, or at least a yellow metal. With that in mind, I started base coating with light umber. Next, I mixed in some golden yellow. As these were generally rather small areas, and I was running low on time, I didn't do any blending. I just used thin layers, running through golden yellow, then adding more and more bright ivory. Admittedly, I really felt pressed for time here, so much of the gold armor was painted rather sloppily. Ultimately though, getting it done for my daughter was the goal. Not perfection, or really anything even close. Continuing with the purple theme, the boots and the thing around the shoulders, the shrug, I guess, needed to be purple, though slightly different. This time I went with faded plum, mixing in just a hint of black, which not only darkens and desaturates the color, but helps with initial coverage. Much like with the skirt and bodice, I treated the boots and shrug differently, with smoother transitions on the shrug and sharper transitions on the boots. Trying to help sell the different materials. Soft and silky shrug, hard and shiny leather. 
At this point, I was running really short on time, so the magic arrow really did not get the treatment it deserves. I just slapped on some white, followed by jade, then made the center a bit brighter. Adding some OSL would have been nice, but corners needed to be cut and I hadn't even started on the frame yet. Following the theme of cutting corners, I very quickly slapped some paint on the rock that holds her up. First slapping on blue-black, then roughly building some volumes and highlights with mixes of dark neutral grey and bright neutral grey. Finally adding a little white. I kind of needed to tie that jade colour in a bit, so I started painting the small flowers with it, possibly suggesting the elf's magic came from nature. Adding some highlights by mixing in some bright ivory. Alright, moving on to the part of this where I truly had no idea what I was doing. And rather than thinking about it, I just started tearing the frame apart. Glass? Who needs glass? I figured foam core would make a decent box. It's reasonably sturdy and inexpensive. So after cutting and measuring, yeah, maybe I should have done that in the other order. I hot glued the box together. I first broke up some cork, gluing it into the bottom to create a bit of a base for the future snow and ice. Now good old XPS foam would have been the way to go for the mountains, but I didn't have any. I'd picked up some dry floral foam from the dollar store, so I started hacking it up. Literally, I just hacked some rough shapes into it, trying to replicate rock. I'd never really built anything like this, so I was just tossing darts at this point. After getting some shapes that seemed appropriate, I glued them in. After gluing in all the foam mountains, I put in an extra piece of cork to provide some additional elevation for Caladriel, then grabbed a ball of tinfoil, pressing it into the foam to create some extra rocky texture. As a way of sealing everything and adding just another layer of texture, I diluted some texture paint with water and covered all the foam and cork. I decided to grab the airbrush and additionally hose everything down with Style and Res. Since it's an acrylic polyurethane, I hoped it would really seal the foam, making it less likely to soak up all the paint I was about to put on it. Copying the steps I'd done with the tactical rock, I slapped on the paint, keeping it fairly wet and roughly blending it as I went along. Then slopping on a touch of white on the snowy peaks. To provide some icy cold contrast, I covered the ground with grey-blue and followed it up with a dry brush of white. Then thinking it might provide a bit of a shiny ice effect, I covered the ground with some AK water effects. Which worked okay-ish. Time for some snow. I mixed some snow from the army painter with white glue, roughly 50-50 until it was a thick, crystally paste. Then kind of randomly spread it around. When everything was dry, it was finally time to glue the frame to the box. And there you go, the biggest and most involved piece I have ever done. All told, I spent about 16 hours on this over four days. And while that was all the time I had, I would have loved to spend four or five times that on it. Ultimately though, my daughter absolutely loved it, which is far and away the most important part. And it also makes this the thing that I'm most proud of. Now, if you want to see actual art, check out Roman Lapotte here on YouTube and on Instagram. He is a true artist when it comes to telling stories in all sizes of dioramas. As I said, he is one of my hobby heroes. So if by some random chance you're actually watching this Roman, thank you. And I absolutely cannot forget Alex from 52 Miniatures. He's an actual filmmaker creating cinematic videos 
and minis here on YouTube. And his recent framed Ravage Star piece really helped cement this idea for me. I will link all of their info down below. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute legend. While you're here, hit that like button and subscribe for more mediocre hobby content. And for extra credit, consider sharing the video. Let's see if we can get Roman to actually watch this. Thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.